So welcome to uh, the session on live coding on, on CQRS event sourcing. Uh, a brief, brief, um, so I want to know who, how many of you know about CQRS? Anyone? And about event sourcing. So some, some hands bo both on CQRS and event sourcing. So I, my name is Aki Salmi. Um, I'm a software craft, crafter currently working at Visma. I go to a lot of conferences. A lot of those are open space conferences where I go to. I do other things too. I, I do help teams and work groups um, to find f joy and, and meaning at work. The, the teams often are like nursing homes, so quite far away from my team. I'm also a hiking guide. <laughs> so I do quite a lot of things other than, than software too. Um, so this is actually one of the conferences I'm, I'm organizing myself, so it's a code freeze. It's, it's, it has a name for a reason. You might see the reason there. So structure of the talk today is, is so that, that's like uh, who I am, um, what, kind of, what kind of things I do at, at, uh, back home. Next I'm going to introduce CQRS event sourcing briefly. And then we'll have like 30 plus minutes of coding, live coding here. And then, then if there is any other questions about CQRS, event sourcing, or the code, um, you can. Um, so we can have the discussion then. The code is in in um, visible in in this bitla, bitly geekon CQRS geekon underscore CQRS. So if you want to see the code later. All right. So common query responsibility segregation is, is basically, so I, I t when I describe common query responsibility segregation, I typically start with CQS, common query separation, where it says the message is either a command with side effects or a query with no side effects. Of course, if, if there is um, um, a pop method for an array that's a, takes an item from an array and, and, um, and also returns the new item. So sometimes commands, commands and queries, we must actually uh, combine those. So CQRS is like CQS, but in object level. So an object is either only a command or a query. Simple as that. So in this case, for example, you see on the, on the uh, left hand side, so there is, that's like the right model, so the right object command. So, so in this case, what we, we are going to see in this uh, app that we're building also, there is going to be a command to rate. And on the right hand side, uh, right -hand side we'll get a, a query to get feedback. And it will be, uh, the both will have basically the same database or the same storage mechanism. Um, and everything will be stored as events. And event sourcing is to capture all events or changes to an application state as a sequence of events. So I draw this. I draw this. So uh, the uh, typical way to to or currently or, the, or often used way to store the state is to have state as as any given moment. And in the event source sourcing, it's, it is that we do create an event. So we start by uh, drawing, drawing a circle, then we add color, it, color in it, then we have a triangle, and then we start adding, adding more stuff into it. And in, as the last thing, we're just adding the apples into the tree. So this is, this is to des describe event sourcing. So the app we are actually building now is is very simple. It's a feedback app, so you can give feedback for for uh, sessions in a conference. So basically, there is a need to create a session. So so what um, conference conference organizers can do, participants can register to a session and rate a session. So give either ratings five stars, four stars, one stars, and then the session. Um, or the, the uh, speaker and the conference organizers can get session feedback, since the feedback is, is always good. So 
basically three commands and one query. So that's like the session what is what it's gonna be, or the, the app what it's gonna be about. So this will be in four four steps. So the first first step we we're gonna learn is what is a command, how to handle a command, one way of doing it. The next one is is that we are going to build a read model entity from event stream. So how to build that. The third step we're going to dis describe or discuss about the responsibility of command handlers and the relation in of the command handlers in the, the code that I have now, uh, their relation in DDD or uh, the IDD, the inter uh, Interaction Driven Design by Sandro Mancuso, if you have ever heard of those. Step four is about business rules and validations. So, step one, what is a command, how to handle a command? So this is what, what we're going to do in the first step. So we're, we're going to create, a, so in the controller, we're creating a session. So we're going to send create a session command uh, message to a create session command handler. A command handler, basically it implements the interface of a handler, which again is, is a functional interface makes things quite easy and nice. And in the, in the handler, what, we, what we're going to do is, is we're going to create, get uh, a unique ID for, for, the, for the session. Then we're going to uh, create the session and there are some events going to be uh, created for, for the session. And, and then we're actually going to save the session into event stream. And there is like the magic of, of um, events. But actually, this time we're not doing the saving part, so that's what we're going to do later, later in in the um, course of time. Um, there was a talk about uh, Peter had a talk about maintainable code and naming. So I don't name things as session repository. Session repository, I know it as schedule. So what I. <coughs> try to do at this, this point when it comes in the database, so there's going to be one row in the database saying that there's going to be a UUID of the session, then there's going to be some class metadata, and then there's going to be representation of, of the event and the version number. So it's time to code. So what I've done also is, is I created this um, acceptance test that gave me focus. So I actually started by creating this class. So this was my first thing when I started to work on this, this app. So this was the first lines of code that I did. And this is just from the steps here are for me to, um, for us to understand what we're doing at any given time. So given a session, so basically I, I do call um, uh, the uh, REST controller for the create method to create a new session. So let's go to the test case. Let's, so I have tests already done. So this is, this is how we will test drive this piece of code. So let's run the tests. <laughs> and by the way, the acceptance test, of course, those fail currently. Because there are quite a few things that are not, that are not done yet. So the session root fails. Session root should. So that's also one way I'm, I'm actually rename, uh, naming my tests. So session root should return UUID in the location header. And it says here in the test case that when I, when I send the message create um, to the root, it should actually get the session UUID from the command handler that is given as a uh, parameter to the to the session root. So let's let's do it. So instead of doing that, let's create a local variable. And it says we get this from the command handler, which handles a method. Oh, you don't see that. It says add session command. I have to create a new add session com command. And it takes a title that I get from new session dot title. And I need to assign this to a, to a variable. So let's, let's run the tests 
again. So that test actually, so it says two failed, which are the acceptance tests, which are failing now. So I want to briefly go through what, what the command handler are, command handlers are doing now. So a command handler basically implements the handler, which, um, which is a uh, functional interface uh, that takes a message. Message is, is either a query or a command. And it returns something. In this case, it returns just session UUID that we will actually give to the location header. So the next step is, is since I did test drive that, okay, there is command handler that does something. So what I'm going to do now is, is uh, test drive what the command handler should actually be doing. And I'll just run the test and I have a third failing and the failing says there it gets different UUID that it actually expects. So what I, what I in, in this command handler, what I, what I tried to do was, was in this picture, so the first thing was it should create a new UUID for the session. So it should get the new UUID for the session. And here it says schedule.new session UUID. So let's, let's make this happen. So let's return session, session UUID. Let's create a variable out of that. Is scheduled a new session UUID. And let's run the tests. Yay, again, two, two failing tests, which are the acceptance tests. And I'm totally fine with that, since it only tells me that I'm, I'm still not done. So now the serial new session you idea. So this is something that I've just like hacked for, for, for this reason. So there is no reason for, for going deeper in, in, in this path. So we actually can go go to, to other um, other paths. So the first step is actually done now. So I'll just check that I'll just remove all the to do's from step one that I'm actually don't need, need anymore. So that was, that was what we did. So if we go to time to code part, continue. So that we created a session. We haven't actually stored anything to the event store yet. So that's actually something we do later in the, in, in, um, in the course of time. So now we're actually building a read, read model entity from, from event stream. So we, we'll go to the right hand side. So uh, we get, try to get a feedback in the, and in the query handler, we create a session feedback result entity from, from, um, from the events that are, are stored. And what in this, this example we're doing now is, is the events that are in, in the store are events like this. So there is session created and then there is a session rated with, with five stars. And how to make a read model entity out of those is that we load the whole history, it goes through all the events, and it creates, um, it adds the title and it adds ratings so that I actually can uh, calculate the average rating. So I actually have, it's called uh, get average rating in the code and not get av like in here. So time to code again. So step two here. This was also the way I actually started when I, when I implemented this was that when, when I created my first session, I thought that it actually would make a sense for me to go to the projection and go to the read model since then I would, I would learn myself more out of, um, out, of, um, out of the domain. So what it says is, again, there is a, a root or controller. And for that, there is the method uh, get session. It should be named get, get session feedback, by the way. Let's, let's use the boy scout, fool, uh, boy scout rule. And currently, it's just cr it returns a fake, just for, for the acceptance test to work, basically. And here is, here is the test that we should be implementing now. 
Now I should have three failing test cases again. So two acceptance tests that are failing. And the one says, one who says that we're actually getting wrong wrong uh, feedback. So we, we're expecting good to get a mock, but we, we are getting a real feedback. And in this query handler, um, in, in this query, query part in the controller, so I could basically give it a, um, a repository to the controller directly. But I'm, I'm just having query handler just for the sake of, of showing a query handler. But everything is, is basically done in this step, this step. So I need to do two things here in this, this step. So I need to go to the feedback sessions route. So the feedback sessions route should get a uh, feed, feedback session result, session feedback result out of a query handler. So there is a query handler, handles and it gets new session feedback query and it takes a session ID. By the way, this is also quite interesting that interesting that I have done refactoring so I typically nowadays since I have a type for a session UUID so it would be better to have the type already here in this part. So I run the tests, still the one fails so actually I need to go to handles method and here it says um, that it should get, so let's go to, to the test back again. So it was here, it should call find session feedback from the, from the uh, session repository, basically the schedule. This query handler is, is sort of optional to have. Schedule dot find session feedback session UUID from feedback query session UUID. So I'll get a session feedback from here and instead of returning feedback, I'll just return session feedback and run the tests. And now there's two, 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 that action, two tests that are failing. So Test driving, test driving the query query handler. Going to um, going now to the repository, but this doesn't do anything yet. So the repository, how I'm doing the repository here. So there is a test case for the next test case for me. So what the repository should do is uh, I'll just go go to the, this again. So the repository should get all the should get the history, all the events, and sh it should load the events into a new, new um, session feedback results. So it says here. So when, the, uh, when I send the message find session feedback to the schedule, I expect the schedule to send find by UUID to the event store. And the event store returns to, um, uh, to events here. Actually, let's just make a third one here, which would be registered. Participant registered event, which takes, what does it take? Session UUID, which is UUID, and then it takes participant UUID dot generate, so whatever it is. And the version, of course, should be three, since there should be three sessions created. So if we run this test, this test should fail again, so it doesn't call it doesn't call session event store find by UUID. So let's make a call to event store to get all the events for the session. So event store find by UUID. It takes a UUID it's called random, but we're not doing it. We're getting the UUID this way. So I'm introducing a history. I like more history than events since it's a history at this time. So this is the way I'm actually creating, create, building a new entity in, in Event Store. I'm loading all the history, so I'm all loading all the events from the history. And then I'm, I'm loading it into, um, I'm loading that and creating a new, new feedback result. So it's still failing. And the reason for, for the failure is that get version is 
faking that it always returns minus one since if I had not done this it would have basically worked some so the test would have passed earlier so this is sort of I needed to make fake this for the uh, sake of demonstration so I'll, I'll show you what, where we are now so we are we are currently so we are creating so in the history load it takes all the events and it creates the session feedback out of those so let's go to uh, oops, session feedback result and there's a test here I'll just ignore this again so I should get now fourth test to fail so this is for the sake of uh, making sure that so this is that it actually the uh, UUID of the session result is actually the one in the um, session created event loaded from the history and let's make that happen now so when I call the load I create a new session feedback result which is a private of course and this I've created a private class to separate the, the history and the projection from, from the aggregate roots sort of things and what, what it does is it instantiates a new event loader that has basically three methods one to register an event, an event listener and event consumer and then there is a metho method apply that then takes an event and if the event is registered it actually applies, accepts the event and then it, it pump, pumps up the version number of the um, of the events so basically what it does is when I reply re play here the session created event it goes to here to session created event it, it applies to this method it calls this method and it modifies the event you uh, this you, this UUID in this private class having said that the session generate that the get UUID method method for for the session feedback results we can call that just the event source entity get UUID and it should work if we just have the court mark so now there's only three failures so the same work with works with versions event source en entity get version so this should fix the version part and now there should be error in that it's it's uh, the error should be that the um, average is minus four point minus zero point four which of course is not the case again event source entity get average rating which I've already implemented and now everything works this didn't happen when I actually built this so this means that I'll just I'll just make this fail again since this should not work so basically the, the problem lies somewhere in here but I'll, I'll show that to you soon so I need to just create another participant that uh, rates like 4 and in this case so the, the test case sa says that I can reset my rating to 0 so if I give 0 as rating it's basically that I haven't rated this at all so this should um, this should ha now have the average rating of 4 so this is this from, from the domain that what we're expecting so we did actually the step 2 now let's see how it's here um, ne next we'll go to the step 3 which is the rate session and here we are actually saving the events I'll sh save the events now um, when I'm creating the session too. So the learning goals is like the responsibility of command handler and the relation in, in DDD terms. Again, the, the left hand part of the picture. Again, let's go to the code. When participant rates, I'll just make this so that we'll see what what's happening here so when participant rates so one of the ideas here is that a participant can rate 
So it gives more information about the ratings if participant actually is in the session. So we'll see a lot of interesting things in the register command handler here. So this is again um, register method forwards things to the command handler. And here in this register, register command handler, two things are actually happening. So, so it is finding a participant and it is finding session. So it, it is creating two different entities out of out of the events, out of out of the the um, uh, creates two different ent entities, and then in it can send messages to both session and participant entities. So it can send a mes message to session that register participant and partic to participant that register to event, and it can thus even save those two entities and the, the events of those two entities differently. So this is actually sh shows two ways that I, I started to do started this with this kind of way, and then I start decided to refactor it a bit. So um, and s uh, probably I would still continue the refactoring when creating a couple of more um, couple of more command handlers. So this command handler sort of re represents in in DDD term it represents the application layer that it actually can handle two different entities. So command handler is, is quite close to an application layer in um, DDD. And now we actually could go and save. So this is this was the the save session. Um, so the save session part. So command handler so when it when when I create a new session it should save the session into event store so now let's do that so it says that when the command handler add session com with add session command it should save the session to event publisher and it's it's failing because of that currently so it says wanted but not invoked event publisher save. And let's let's make that happen the next then. So there should be event publisher dot save. There's going to be a feedback UUID and and that is uh, session UUID UUID we're actually creating. Then there's it requires aggregate root, which is session. And it should take uh, expected version, which is the version of the last item in in the um, store, which is zero since there are nothing. There's nothing in the store. So let's create a variable session, and it is a session is session dot create, and it takes title, which we get at session command dot title. And it gets a session UUID, session UUID like this. And I need to I need to assign it to a session. And there's an index out of bounds exception. Which actually is because there are no events that are uh, that are uh, stored yet, and for that reason, I have another test case here that I need to unignore. That will make this happen. So you'll see soon why why the why there was this exception. So. So this says that when I create a new session, so session create it should get version version should be one. So let's see. So session create basically does nothing here. So what we want to do is is we want to create an event. So we want an event to, to be to be created, an event that is is then uh, published. So if if we see here is that there is this event create a session that basically what it does is it pub it calls publisher publish which then publishes the events, and then it actually gets stored into the database. So session create, actually we need to create session dot create session and it takes title 
and it tells you your ID. And this should now make all the rest tests uh, passing, not the one, not the one um, acceptance test. So let's let's see how I'm actually publishing now uh, events. So let's let's make a deep dive in the, into this. So there is an event publisher. Event publisher is is so this is again a private class. So the so I've, I've decoupled the publishing part from here. So it takes an event. Uh, what it does is it, it takes an event source entity, which is again the internal representation of the domain entity. And it applies, it applies the event, so I could have like domain, domain, um, so certain domain uh, validations at this, this point. So there might be the thing that I can't rate if, I've, if I have not uh, registered to the session. So it's not supported yet. So when I publish this, I, I, cr I create the, uh, I modify, I add, I apply the event to the, to the entity that I'm using, and then I'm adding it to the uncommitted changes list. So um, an event publisher is, if we go to see that it's, it has, where is it? Event publisher. This one. So again, that this has two, three, three. Well, this actually we were looking at this. So just take publish, and it publishes the event. All oh, right. So now let's go to the acceptance test again. So we need to rate a session. So to rate a session. To rate a session, we need to go to the command handler, and, and here the command handler is, is again calling a session rate. So this is done already, and it publishes the event that it gets from the session, calling the event publisher uh, save method. So now here we have this. This is session should. So we have a couple of more tests here that we could. We could. Um, unignore and this should but actually it works because we we did uh, we already did the changes we needed for for this to work so when I create a session and when I send a message that actually mo creates an event in in the entity it adds the event to the uncommitted changes event uh, list that the event publisher is actually using then uh, this is actually the place where I'm probably do, going to do a lot of changes in at some point. So actually, what we're we're uh, still missing from from this this e example is is to make this last test last test fail that it says that I can reset a rating, which is basically it means that um, when we are creating the uh, projection we we reset the rating if if someone is rating the stars as a zero zero so let's go and, and we can do it here and we actually need to have it exactly like we had all or previously we need to have the uh, generate method to to give another participant here so this this should Re, uh, re, uh, recreate the, the same failure we had previously. So let's go to the average rating, and it calls the event source entity get average rating. And basically, what it says that when whenever there is a session re rated event, and if if the session rated event has stars of zero, then the session rating should be removed from the user in this case. So I can make it very easily sort of hackish way now. Stars dot zero equals event dot stars. If if 
if it's zero then I can what's the, the ratings dot remove event dot participant UUI. oh it removes the event from the participant UUID. And this actually makes the acceptance test uh, acceptance test this should be three of course not zero makes the acceptance test to fail uh, to, to pass to this two should should be green now these are these are tests that I, I did when I was when I was implementing this this um, this code base um, so so the step four was business rules and validations and now the business rules and validations I'm actually going to not, not going to uh, code anymore so I'm going to give a couple of pictures and, and describe a couple of things here so this is another another view of, of like um, CQRS. So where do you have validations? So you could have some validations in the controller here. So there is it says input validations that we are getting correct input. So so for example the <coughs> UUID we're getting uh, in the request is actually a valid UUID. Then in the action, so there might be some app, uh, action or which was the command handler we can have application layer specific validations there. And then in, in the, the, the last one place to, to actually have some validations is like domain logic validations where we could have the validations that a user can rate a session only if the user has registered to the session. So th three different places where you can actually have validations and different kinds of validations in this so that's actually also sort sort of describes what some of the, some of the responsibilities of, of these elements oh well, that was time to code so recap event sourcing build the application state from a source from a stream of events and uh, secure as to, um, I'll just have it here, this picture again. CQRS have a different read model, different write model. You can have the same database, you can have different database. That's not CQRS specific things. Doesn't matter what, how you are creating those, uh, whether it's the uh, same database or, or different. What is your event store? It can be database. So I have production, production uh, CQRS event store app that is using uh, normal database as, as uh, event store. So separate commands from the queries fr from the get-go. That's event sourcing and uh, CQRS. So this is a picture from Code Freeze. I mean we, ha we have there this thing we do in the mornings it's called uh, daily stand-up and there's only one, re one rule talk as long as you want. So questions, feedback. No questions then. Thank you.